Hello, my friends, and welcome to this version of Lunch and Learn. I am Pastor Bruce McKinney, and this is our Lunch and Learn Bible study. We are so glad to have you here today. And today we're going to be studying in the book of James. We're going to do a survey study, so which means we're going to take a couple of chapters, look at a few verses, and see how those verses apply to our lives today. So before we get started, uh, let us do like we always do, and let us go into prayer. Uh, let's bow our heads. Dear God, we thank you for this time and this day. We praise you for who you are and what you are in our lives, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you open up our hearts, our minds, and our understanding to what it is that you have for us today, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So again, like I said, we are going to be doing a survey of the book of James, and a survey is a high-level study, and so that's what we're going to be doing. So let's uh, get started. We're going to give you some background information about the book of James. Uh, the author uh, is James, who is actually the half-brother of Jesus. Uh, yes, Mary and Joseph had other children after the Immaculate Conception of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So um, just like any other situation that we have in our modern day where we may have a his, hers, and ours, uh, they had that similar situation. So uh, there was uh, Jesus who was the firstborn, and we know that that was a conception from the Holy Spirit. And then there were other children, and James was one of those uh, children. So he was the half-brother of Jesus. And you find uh, a reference to that in Matthew, the 12th chapter, the 47th verse. Uh, the time is AD 45, so this is believed to be one of the first New Testament books that was written. And the place is Jerusalem. It was written from uh, that city. So let's go on and uh, take a look at this first chapter and the second through the fourth verse. And I have a subtitle here, Trials Are a Test. So it reads like this, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. So Let's just start at the very beginning of these uh, passages here that we were reading. Um, it said, uh, consider it pure joy. Now, I don't know about you, but <laughs> I'm that one who wants to have trials in my life. I don't want a lot of issues. I don't want things uh, going uh, in a disarray or anything like that. I prefer, if, if at all possible, that it could be as smooth as, as it could be. But that is not what causes you to grow in faith. It is the trials of life that cause you to grow in faith. It is when you have to go through something that causes you to, uh, that that develops and produces uh, perseverance in you. And perseverance is that stick to itness or that faithfulness. That's what causes it. it. It causes you to keep going. So that's why James said here, consider it pure joy, because those trials bring with it bring with them um, some some things that are going to help you in your Christian walk. And so as we face different trials and things like that, and I know we don't take pleasure in them, but we know that this is going to make us stronger. So that is where uh, joy comes in. And, and remember, joy is not like being happy. Happy depends on what's happening. Joy is something that comes from you, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength and things like that. So that's what happens there. And he says so that uh, you may be mature. It makes you grow, okay, and uh, complete and not lacking in anything. In other words, you are becoming a mature Christian able to handle the obstacles uh, and the trials of life. So we're going to go on. And in the fifth verse, it says this. Um, and I have a subtitle, Ask God for Understanding. The fifth verse says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So 
If you don't understand what's going on in your life, or if you need some questions answered about what is happening, that's a simple solution. Ask God about it. Ask him about it. Ask him what is going on, why is this happening, and how can I get through this? Because it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. And God is not like a lot of our friends and, and family who will say things so well, you should know that, or I don't know what to tell you, you know, but God doesn't do that. What God does, he gives the information generously without finding fault. He doesn't find anything wrong with you or say what you should have known, but he gives it to you. He gives the answer to you. And how do we have this conversation with God? Of course, we have it through prayer. So we have to pray and ask God for the understanding of what we're going through and, and what uh, may be the result of this. And so, and give us the strength to, to make it. So if, you, if you're looking for answers, ask God and he will definitely give you the answers. Now, when you pray about it, you have to be willing to listen to God, okay? So we're gonna move on. We're gonna learn another lesson here in James. And we're gonna look at the uh, fourth chapter the seventh through the eighth verse. It says, resist the devil. That's the subtitle I have there. And then the seventh verse, it says this, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. There are, there's a whole lot in these two uh, verses here. First thing it says, submit yourselves. What, what are we doing? The King James says, humble yourselves. It talks about humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. But here it says, submit yourselves then to God. Okay, so we have to be willing not to do it our way. We have to do this God's way. Uh, the thing about life, there's so many schemes and tricks that you can use to try and get things done. Don't do it that way. That's not God's way. Submit yourselves to God. Do it God's way. Resist the devil. Resist the schemes. Resist the temptation. And what? And he, meaning the devil, will flee from you. Now, I don't know how old you are. I don't know what you've been through life. But I know I got a few decades behind me now, and I can tell you from the first decade to this one, there's always been something that is going to try and trick you up, that the devil is going to tempt you and all these kinds of things. He either tempt you, he tempts you with your own uh, appetite, and that's what we have to recognize. But the thing is, is that you have to resist the devil and he will flee to you, from you. You have to resist, resist. Don't just say, oh, okay, well, I'll just go on and do it. No, this is a fight. This is a battle that we are in. You have to fight for your salvation. You have to fight for your marriage. You have to fight for your children and things like that. There, There is a battle. You may be raising your children a certain way and certain things you want them to do and and have, and there may, may be people that say they don't need all that, or you don't want your children to be around anybody. Don't don't worry about that. You raise your children the way that God has directed you to do that. Now, I don't know why I got stuck on there, but that's why I ended up. But anyway, it says, come near to God, and he will come near to you. How do you come near to God? Study his word. Spend time with God. Pray to God meditate on this word. That's how you come near to God. You don't come near to God by watching a lot of TV. And some people say, well, I watch televangelists and things like that. Well, that may be good. And uh, that, you know, that's, that's, that's good. Uh, otherwise you wouldn't be watching me. <laughs> but the thing is this, this alone is not going to do it. You have to study for yourself. God has to talk to you. You have to meditate on his word. You have to get in his word. You have to ask questions about things in his word that you don't understand. And, and as we move on, the verse concludes, it says, wash your hands, you sinners, 
and purify your heart, you double-minded. You cannot be double-minded and serving God. Either you're going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil. You cannot hover between the two, okay? Uh, Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. Either he's going to love the one and hate the other, or he's going to hate the other and love love the, the other one. But the thing is, is that you can't do that. You cannot serve two masters. If you're going to serve God, then that's what you have to do. You have to do the things that are going to uh, help you serve God. And that's purify yourself. That is get away from those things that you know are pulling you away from God. And let me tell you, that takes some work. It takes strength, but you can do it with prayer. You can do it by relying on God. And let me tell you, this is not always an instantaneous thing. Sometimes it is. Sometimes God works with people's lives and it's instantaneous. And that is good. And I'm grateful for those people. And I'm grateful for when those things happen. But there are times where it's a process and you have to ask God to help you through that process. And the most important thing that I want you to get from this particular passage is where it says, resist the devil. Resist him. Resist him. Uh, you have to understand things about yourself. And when you find yourself in those situations, withdraw yourself as soon as possible from those types of situations. So I pray that you have gotten something out of uh, this brief survey that we've done in the book of James. And I encourage you to study the book of James for yourself. It's only five chapters. You can uh, read that depending on uh, your reading level. You can read it within uh, probably about 15 to 20 minutes. And that's just reading. That's not studying. Then you have to go in there and study God's word. So I want to thank you for watching uh, this presentation of Lunch and Learn Bible Study. And I pray that God will bless you and continue to keep you in the name of Jesus. God bless you.